Hello, as promised, I will go through the display modes. Very big topic in Rhino. And you can see here the rendered viewport. But there are many more and we will discuss on how to manipulate them to create your own display mode. You can not just have the ones which are already here existing. You can manipulate them, you can copy them and you can share them even. Where should we start? So in the past, I was actually, I'm not sure, I think um, started with Rhino 5. There's this panel on the right where you can actually tweak some aspects of the of the appearance of your objects in your 3D world. Before that, there was not such a thing. There was there was the options, and there you could tweak your different uh, viewport modes. In any case, what do we have? I, I will reset all the the viewport modes um, to how they are when you open Rhino the first time. So how to do that? Go into options. Or you can also go here and edit the rendered setting or any other setting. So for example, if you're in the wireframe, you can edit wireframe settings and you also get into the render options. So it's the same, it doesn't matter. And here you can see the display modes. All the ones where I changed something, it's blue. That tells me that there's some changes. Let's restore all of them. So we have the wireframe, we have shaded viewport, we have the rendered viewport, which uses uh, ambient occlusion kind of render style, ghosted, ghosted here you can't see it that good, but if I have some object in the back and you see that, then you can see can see through and we have x-ray technical that's quite interesting by the way I'm let's see where I am here on the black one oh layer five that's why so of course some of the some of the appearance is actually changing with your color and the color of the line in the layer uh, settings and then we have artistic. I don't like it that much. I don't like this paper style in the background, but it's a, this this um, display mode is quite useful for tweaking it to your own kind of style. If you want pen, basically without any shadows, it's very useful. Arctic, which is very similar to the rendered viewport, very similar. It just shows a bit more of the surrounding, the material. On the object, it seems different. And ray trace. That always depends on which render engine you're using. At the moment, it doesn't really work. I'm not sure why, but we can look at that later. So, so in general, they all work very similar. Um, if you go on that symbol here, display, or if you don't have that symbol, you can actually right click and um, just switch it on on display here. Maybe I'll go a bit closer here and see if so there's a lot of extra kind of toolbars for all kinds of stuff. For, for any of these uh, viewport modes or display modes, you have this like toolbar where you can tweak some aspects of it. So here you can see the active viewport is perspective because we at the moment we have only one here, but we could have more. And we, they could all have a different, they could all use a different uh, viewport mode. And then you can set here the background, for example, a solid color, black or white or any other color, or you can set an image, a gradient, you can set the gradient like this or the other way around it's interesting gradient with four colors use render settings um, transparency I don't know exactly maybe with other with another mode then this becomes obvious what that is never used it and then you can uh, adjust other stuff see that you can change the you can show iso curves Surface edges, tangent edges, sub D, 
wires and boundaries and so on, curves, slides, you can turn it off and on, whatever you, whatever you want. Turn off the grid, for example, and how the clipping plane looks, looks like, that's something you can adjust here. Um, let's, for that, we, let's go into another viewport, shaded viewport. It's pretty much the same stuff. Th there's just more. For example, you can actually change the transparency here. It works almost like a like the ghosted viewport where you you see through stuff. Here you can also change, for example, how the, the clipping plane works. Let's 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 check that out. Uh, clipping plane. So you can show it filled or not filled, show edges or no edges, quite interesting. And you pretty much have the same settings here, just choose a solid color and that goes on. Same settings apply here. Here you can turn off and on shadows. Actually, you have that here as well. Yeah, you can turn on, on and off shadows. But for that, we also need to understand the uh, lighting. That's you can see it may creates a bit weird stuff. Let's kill that maybe. It's it it's it's quite weird what it does. So we will go into that and have a look how we can fix that. So again, yeah, you can turn off and on shadows. And it always depends on which light mode or lighting mode you're using. At the moment, this is set to ambient occlusion. That means that um, in corners, get this like there's a, like a shadow calculated in corners. In some programs, you can actually adjust that on how wide that shadow spreads. Ghosted, it's very similar as we discussed here. You can actually, you can see what has changed. It's just the transparency is different as we discussed before in the normal shaded viewport. In X-ray, you see all the lines and all the basic transparency is set to, to 100. I don't know why it says zero, that's a bit strange. Okay, I understand. So just the shading is basically set to zero, but you see through all the, the ISO lines and so on. By the way, you can also turn that off. Uh, ah, okay, wait, wait a second. So this is actually, a sub D surface. Hmm. That's what, what I created here was actually a sub D surface. I understand. Good to know. So yeah, so we, we we can actually turn off and on the information for the sub D wires and so on. So X-ray technical. I never used it, but could be very interesting for some options. So for example, if I if this is white, let's try that and it's also white. So, yeah, I think you get it. You can do quite a lot of this stuff just with this side panel and the colors in the layers. Artistic, I don't like this that much, but you have quite a lot of options here. So you can actually change the file or you just set the, the color and you can see that there's different line weights for um, the boundary and the, the lines inside. And you can all adjust that and also the color, but not here, that's the thing. See, here greases, silhouettes. Um, and then we have pen. It's just, again, this has this like background paper color. I don't know, I'm not a big fan of it, but I can imagine this works quite well like this. You can actually show the intersections, quite cool. Arctic, this is very much like the render viewport. It's interesting that here nothing changes when I change the transparency. So it's a bit like a redundant kind of button, but you still have the options to turn on your creases and uh, ISO curves.
Interesting. What else? Okay, now what if so? What what other options do we have here? Shades elliptic objects only. That's also uh, quite interesting. So you can select one item and that will be shaded. So what if you? So one thing you a lot of people might not know, but you can actually mix. You can mix uh, these display modes. So you can, for example, have one object in this in in one kind of display mode and the other object in another kind of display mode. And how to do that? So set display mode. This is this is basically the standard. This is basically what I do here is selecting the the, the this display mode. But what we can, and that's pretty cool, is that we can actually set this object in wireframe or in shaded in shaded uh, display mode. So how to do that? Set object display mode set object display mode and then you can choose the mode and you can say shade it and that doesn't really change much but for example here you see that this is in the shaded viewport, this is shaded mode, and this is just the wireframe mode. So shaded through, shaded uh, object display mode, and this is in the in the viewports wireframe display mode. It's getting confusing, I know. And we can also reset that, set object display mode, and then we can set uh, use view. And then it sets it to the view as it is, to, to where it is at the moment. So now if we want to change the display mode and tweak it even further, then we can actually go into here, into the options. And you can see it changed a lot. Let's let's put it back again. Restore default, restore default, restore default. So when you go in here, if, if you go up a hierarchy to the display modes where you have then all the display modes here, you can actually see that you have this window with all the display modes. And now you could, instead of like changing the random viewport, you could actually make a copy of it and then change that. It already made the copy or you can, you can create your own. But let's, let's, um, let's use the, the, the rendered viewport on as a base and we try maybe we try the rendered viewport and with the artistic viewport to change stuff and then you should have a pretty good idea on what you can do and we build our own yes exactly so let's go back um, delete now I take this one and create a, new, a copy and now I have a copy of rendered and I can I can actually change that if I want rendered Can change the name. And then it's automatically updated. And then you have this also here. So you can see that now in the in your viewport you can actually choose that. It's of course it's now it's exactly the same. But we can start to change it now. So for example, we can change the background we can use the ground plane settings that's when the actually when the ground plane is actually visible linear workflow settings that we might need to go let let's let's keep it as it is for now don't don't touch that it's um might need to explain about it but yeah you can um change then the shading shade all objects of course we want to shade otherwise we wouldn't see it and then we can, if for example that object has a material, then this would be also rendered. Let's let's give this a material. A material. I don't have V-Ray installed here at the moment, so I just use uh, the native Rhino stuff, which is pretty cool anyway. So texture, let's add a texture. And I'll just quickly change this here. We'll talk about materials uh, another time. 
and about mapping and, and stuff like that. But let's Now, if we go back here, then we can we could, for example, have one option, a, a rendered display mode, which has which doesn't show the, the 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 materials, and it just and you can then switch between my rendered version and the rendered version. So that way, you can build up your own your own kind of rendered viewport style. Of course, there's more. Here, you can change all the stuff we had before. You can change the scene the scene lighting. That's that's maybe interesting for, because, for example, here I can change back to ambient occlusion. So if I want this, if I like this better, then I can actually use that and and have two versions. One is the rendered viewport like this, and another one is is like that. You can change the grid if you want to show the grid or not. I actually turned it off. Objects you can change actually much more about the objects than um, in here because, for example, you can change the width. Of your curves, for example. Now, if there would be a curve now in here, then it has a thickness of two, and I can, of course, change that further. Could increase that quite a lot. And uh, you can also change the color. You can have one single color for for all curves. And the same works for surfaces. So, for example, here, surface edge settings can actually change the thickness, uh, the naked edge settings, and the iso curves. So, iso curves, I could, for example, let's let's create a, uh, another object here just to see that. So here, I could, for example, change the thickness of my edge. If I would have a naked edge somewhere, then this I could also change that. You can actually see it here on the on the plane. You could also turn off your iso curves completely. Just create just another thing here. I just want to try something. Give this a different material, glass material. And now I could, for example, take this because I don't want to use the materials. I can actually um, change that just for this layer. I can change the object uh, display mode. Set object display mode. Mode. And then you can see it's actually mine is also there now. And then I can choose rendered. And then I have uh, the class as a as a with the material and the others without the material. What else can you change? You can actually change here. But basically, this kind of settings, the line width, the the object's color, that's also, you can change all these however you want. And, they, and the settings are pretty much the same everywhere. Yeah, for all, for all the objects in your uh, viewport, basically it works the same way. You can change the thickness of the, of the object, of the, the line weight, the wire, color the ISO, the ISO uh, lines, thickness, and so on. And the same for meshes. Meshes, again, it's the same stuff. Just keep in mind that um, some of these have different, some of these um, original modes, they have different aspects. For example, go, for example, here on artistic, you can actually see it has a silhouette if you haven't seen the other options. So if we go here and, and have a look, then we have actually a silhouette. So we have here more options for um, creating a silhouette line, which we don't have in the rendered kind of version, which it's a bit annoying, I have to say, but maybe there's a way to change that. Another way would be to copy the artistic view and then add um, kind of the rendered aspects to it. So that, that's something I, I don't, get why this is not an option that would be really cool to have is you also have the silhouette option within the rendered in the rendered viewport mode yeah so again we can change everything here including the clipping plane and we can change the shadows it's also but for that we need to actually know in what kind of lights lighting scheme we are so if we 
in order to change the shadows we actually need to know what kind of lighting is currently available so if we if we try to change the shadows now yeah you can change the quality of the ambient occlusion but not um, but most of these sliders will not have any effect and change the intensity the color anyway but so if we want to have shadow shadow like from a light source like the sun then we need to change the lightings the light setting that is done here at the top of this display mode you can actually check the lighting scheme and at the moment it's set to ambient occlusion you can set no lighting then there's no shadow at default lighting scheme then you have a shadow but you can't control the angle of the sunlight the scene lighting is this one that's basically um, using whatever you have in your render settings Ambient occlusion and custom ambient occlusion and custom light and uh, that I guess you can set lights if I use the scene lighting then it's it set one light because that's I guess the sunlight is set to this uh, vector or like orientation anyway we set it to scene lighting and now we can actually change the orientation of the sunlight in here so, to set. So then you can actually see that this changes with the orientation. And, that, and there seem to be an issue with sub D objects. Or maybe this is just too complex here. Yeah, could be. This is just too complex. Um, you can also then change the intensity of your skylight to make the to make the shadows more crispy. And then we can if we now go back, then we can also adjust the shadows. More grainy, softer more exact but more um, edge the edge quality is lower blurring dirty nah. it seems like this is actually more accurate this should be cleaner but has a this is weird it says self shadowing artifacts that seems more clear more clean transparent never cast this is if you have here in the in that case you can actually see it I don't want to cast shadows through the glass, so you can actually turn it off. <clears throat> and you can set a... In order to make it faster, if you have only a certain area you want to have your shadows, you can set a bubble, like a clipping bubble that defines the area in which these cal shadow calculations happening. You can see that actually when I go here, then it's not ever that's not happening everywhere. Okay, there is actually not so much more to this. Um, of course, there's many more options here in general, and we will have a look at some point. But uh, regarding the display modes, that's basically it. Actually, what I just want to try to do is to um, Build from the artistic viewport and build another and, and try to use some of the rendered viewport aspects if that is possible. So, for example, I would like to have the silhouette. It's funny that in rendered viewport is no silhouette. Okay, so that means I want to copy this copy, copy of artistic, and now I change that. Okay, let's go here and let's, let's select this. And now let's try to change that. Ground plane settings, use render settings. Okay. I don't want to have this uh, use render settings. I will use the render settings for the background. Scene lighting, yes. Shadows, shadows are on. Why they're not on? That's a bit weird. Yeah, here's more actually. Um, okay. Now we're getting somewhere. So it, ch it changed here the shading, the shading setting to rendered ma rendering material. But what I can, and this is interesting, and this is cool, I can change the. 
the lines and also the silhouette. Hmm. No, it doesn't work. It somehow um, somehow removed the options now. It's quite annoying. That doesn't work. Somehow changed my. So that is a question to to McNeil Rhino. Why why you don't allow silhouette lines in the rendered viewport? Why? Please tell me. Oh yeah, I just want to show you how to, you can actually export that and share it with your friends. So you can actually go in, into here and you can select whatever you want to sh uh, share and then you can go here and export and it will just create this file which then you can import into any Rhino. Did I miss anything? Oh, maybe that is the issue. Yes, that's the issue. So this is the the ray traced version. But if you know Blender, then actually this is based on the Cyclist engine from Blender, which can't really compare that. But it's it's actually it's a pretty good render. It's a very good render engine. And um, yeah, I, I I I love that it's here. So the issue. What 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 was the issue? The issue was that I have two graphic cards and I cannot run two graphic cards at the same time with the ray traced viewport. Now it would be interesting if I can mix that again. So if I want to mix that, it seems like it works. Because here it's shown. So this is still in a different viewport mode, right? It's kind of a mix. So if I take this one and say object set display mode mode ghosted, does it work? Just realized that I have my, set my intensity too high, and this I don't like at all. But actually, look, it works. It kind of works. So in the ray traced, in the ray traced uh, viewport, let's check that out. If I can change anything, what what else can I change? Can I change the silhouette? Shadows? No, I cannot. This is based on the render settings. Objects. Let's see. No. It's kind of a bummer, really. I find it's really cool that we have the cycled engine engine in Rhino. It's so I think I will make some tutorials about this render engine soon. Okay, I think that's it. So what was the problem? Problem is that um, I'm using two graphic cards, and normally it's fine to have them on at the same time. But it seems like for the ray traced version, I can only run one. So if I go here, here, yes. So exactly, I need to decide if I use. Either the the one or the other. Let's try this. Is that faster? It's pretty good as well. Yeah. So I think that's enough for today, and let's discuss next time.